Good morning everyone and welcome to this talk about the release of Inkscape 1.0, about its history, about how Inkscape 1.0 came to be, and more generally this talks about what's up in the Inkscape project for now and a bit about the future of the project. So let's start with a bit of Inkscape history first. So Xscape was forked from the Sodipodi project, which was also a vector graphics editor, pre-existing, uh, in 2003, roughly, and uh, published its first version in 2004, which was the version 0.37. At the time, the versioning scheme for Inkscape was uh, a bit simple. Uh, basically, uh, as the goal, the stated goal of Inkscape was to create a vector graphic editor for SVG, uh, format, the versioning was basically how much of the SVG format do we support. So version 0 0.37 basically meant that we uh, supported around 37% of the SVG specification, which means that the goal, the end goal was to eventually publish a 1.0 release with 100% of the SVG specification. So this was the goal. And uh, this versioning continued uh, basically through 38, 39, etc. Uh, until 0 0.48 uh, version, which was um, in 2010, so version 0 0.48. Then after 0 0.48 was out, we published several uh, point releases, which means no big new features, but uh, mainly bu bug fixes and stability until we hit our, I think, most stable version 0 .80, uh, 0 0.48.5. And at that time, we had decided to change the versioning to have a more a faster approach to 1.0 because a lot of people thought that being uh, below 1.0 meant that the software was not stable and that was not at all how we felt about Inkscape because Inkscape was already very stable. So we decided that uh, we would jump basically to 91. So we published the version 0 0.91 in 2015. <clears throat> which means that we felt that we were very close to version 1.0. At that point, we already had in mind the idea that version 1.0 would have to have uh, basically GTK3 to support uh, because GTK2 was already old and uh, not really well supported everywhere and not taking into account a lot of stuff that people already used, like uh, high DPI screens. So uh, after that, we published another version, which was uh, 0 0.92 in 2017, and a few uh, bug fix uh, versions after that, until uh, 0 0.92.5 uh, recently. The start of GTK3 in Inkscape code was basically uh, around 2012 by uh, Alex Valavanis. And uh, it was a bit dormant as a op compilation option in the Inkscape code until 2016, um, a bit before the release of uh, Point 92. Uh, when we when we created the branch for Point 92, uh, after that we made the um, uh, master branch using mandatory GTK3. Basically, we removed the code of GTK2. Uh, so this forced the developers to look at all the issues that the GTK3 branch had, which was basically unusual for the first month uh, after the switch because nothing worked in the GTK3 uh, branch. And uh, after fixing a lot and lots and lots and lots of bugs in this GTK3 branch, we finally released a version using uh, GTK3 in 2020, which is the version 1.0. We haven't yet finished to uh, update to GTK3 because we still have a few deprecation warnings about uh, GTK uh, stuff that is already deprecated. Uh, related to that, uh, we had the pleasure of uh, welcoming uh, more recent uh, 
macOS contributors in the Inkscape uh, developer community. We had a lot of versions without uh, any real uh, macOS developers, so none of the Linux or Windows developers knew how to basically package things for macOS or make things work on macOS, so we could not really uh, have macOS versions. And uh, apparently the GTK3 frameworks makes it easier to provide a GTK3, uh, to provide a macOS version. So we welcomed René who made uh, basically a macOS sort of native version uh, from April 2019, which was a very good thing for the project, I think. <coughs> And in parallel to that, uh, we had the, the Python 3 migration on the extension side, uh, which was uh, mainly initiated by uh, Martin. So Martin started in March 2018 uh, to port all extensions from Python 2 to Python 3 and even some Python 2 compatible. And, and he finished that migration 18 months later, just in time for the release of 1.0. Another thing that prompted us to change our versioning scheme was the arrival of the SVG2 specification. We already had implemented uh, for some time uh, things like uh, paint order to put uh, fill in front of st stroke, for instance. And uh, now uh, we implemented uh, SVG2 text to uh, have text behave more like text in browsers. And uh, we also started to implement um, meshes to have uh, paint meshes uh, but they didn't make it into the SVG2 spec eventually. Hello LGM, um, I'm here to talk about the uh, Inkscape community. Uh, one of the things that is uh, really great about Inkscape is that we take our, our community of contributors very, very seriously and part of what we've done in the last few years has been to really ramp up um, how we invite different kinds of users who may not have been able to con con contribute previously because they're not program pro programmers and finding ways for them to help the pro project. Um, part of this has been facilitated by moving the pro project from Launchpad to GitLab. Um, GitLab now contains many of the new teams that we have uh, and I'm here to talk about a couple of those things. So. Previously, we had the developers team, we had a translators team, a docs team, and then the Inkscape board, which is a specialist uh, fun function. Um, but in the past few, few years, we have been uh, growing our, our vectors team. Our vectors team is just a funny name for our marketing and outreach team. These are people who are very keen and interested to use the product, but they, uh, they also want to contribute back. and. One of the things that they can contribute is being able to like write news articles and post things on Twitter and you know basically make it so that Inkscape has people paying attention to what's going on outside of the developer community. Um, we also noticed that we needed to pay attention to our user community itself. Um, Inkscape had a had a situation where there were a lot of forums on online and a lot of places where people were going for help but none of those were inside the Inkscape community, which means there was a massive divide between where developers were talking about your things and where users needed to go in order to ask questions. Uh, we developed a for forum on our website. We uh, implemented the, a rocket chat system, uh, which we have encouraged not only for our developer team and all of our teams to use, but also we've, uh, we've made sure that users can ask questions there as well. So that the, the, the doesn't, there isn't so much of a divide between people who need help and developers who are, ask, you know, who are communicating what they're trying to do uh, technically. Um, the future for the community, uh, we are trying to grow our user experience and design teams. Uh, we're trying to figure out the best ways of making sure that the designs that they come up with uh, in GitLab, the processes that they go to to refine, are then respected and then brought into code, which is always the, the hard step to go from like a, a perfected design on pa paper and then actually bring that into code, especially since Inkscape is almost entirely volunteer driven. Uh, we have some successes already. Um, some designers were able to learn how to use Glade, 
and therefore they were able to create uh, designs that we were able to bring into Inkscape pretty directly. Um, but we'd also like to grow our user community f f further, um, you know, do more competitions, do more art artist based things. Uh, we'd, we'd also like to grow different types of communities. So uh, user communities that do like CNC work um, or they do specific kinds of artwork or design uh, or planning, things like that. Those, those, those communities usually have specialist knowledge, which they, you know, they can create things like tutorials for each other having space for them so that they can um, learn each other's names and know who to ask for help for specific issues I think is going to be important going for forwards um, and each of those communities of different types of users I think are, are important to Inkscape and we should definitely be paying attention um, our vectors team I have to say a big shout shout out to Chris uh, big shout out to Ryan big shout out for all of the, the vectors Michaela uh, Marin, because they've really um, shown what a, a marketing and outreach team can do for a project. Not only were they able to improve Inkscape by showing us the bugs that were going to be important to our users in, in, in the 1.0 release, things that they, they would definitely notice that we managed to fix because they, they, they consider them blockers. Um, but they were also able to, to promote the, the, the 1.0 in a way that has really increased the, the, the profile of the product project. So if your uh, graphics pro pro project is thinking about doing a marketing and outreach team, uh, I can highly re recommend it. Um, that's, that's it for the, for the community section. Uh, th thank you for listening. Considering the amount of changes in 1.0, this made the release process for, uh, for it very, very long and much longer than anticipated. Uh, we released a first alpha version in January 2019. So the goal of the alpha versions was to have people signal us the biggest problems with it and uh, what was to be fixed with highest priority. Then a second alpha version in June 2019. And uh, then we published a beta in September 2019. Um, where the goal of the beta was to uh, basically collect all the problems, however minor, that could be uh, encountered with 1.0. We then released a second beta in December. Then uh, we tried to fix as much as possible of what was found problematic during the beta and uh, identify a lot of blockers, basically. And then we published a released candidate in April, which uh, where the goal was to have already fixed what was to be fixed before the release. And uh, then one month later, on May the 1st, release.
Overall, this release was a big success. We had a great video by Chris, and while we knew there are many bugs present in the release, and we even let a debug dialogue in the release, apparently a lot of people did not realize it was buggy. I don't know how they missed it, but we received a lot of praise and congratulations for that release. And both in social media, in articles about the release, and even the discussions on Hacker News were mostly elogious, which is quite something. So, yay for the release, I guess. And so we turn to what is in the future for Inkscape. And uh, here I'm, I'm to give you some uh, taste of the kind of things that uh, might be coming in the next few releases. Um, first of all, the question is always, who is next? Um, we have, of course, always the situation that the people that show up, the people that contribute, these are the ones that set the direction of Inkscape. The project as a whole has guides, but mostly it's people who um, want to actually develop things for further. Those are the ones who are most likely to get their features in. That's why uh, in the next couple of months, we're going to have a Hackfest, which is going to be online. And everybody's invited if they're interested in developing Inkscape for the next releases. I'd encourage everybody who has plans uh, to come along. And we're going to have some presentations of all of the, the, uh, the, the, the dreams of the future that we can actually lay down in, in detail and have discussions about them. Um, so what kinds of things can we look for, forward to? Well, there's the, the idea of the collaborative edition, that is Inkscape, where two different individuals using Inkscape can collaborate on the same document. We used to have this kind of functionality, but we need to, to bring it back. Um, there are uh, plans afoot to do that. Uh, we're going to continue the rollout of the customization that is making Inkscape more themable, more configurable. And a lot of this has to do with plans such as making a, an Inkscape for kids, which would be a much more fun and, and bright version of Inkscape that's simplified. Um, but also for many other re reasons, lots of users have particular kinds of needs uh, that we'd like to be able to uh, offer them an interface that, that matches. Uh, there's obviously GTK4, which we hope will be a much easier transition. Uh, we need, we really need to get uh, GPU re rendering support. Inkscape currently re renders everything on the CPU and it's it's quite slow. Um, we need to somehow get the CMYK workflow completed. It's one of the largest gaps in Inkscape's fun fun functionality. It's been on our ro roadmap for a very long time. Um, whether this means developing features in, in, into Cairo or whether it means using a new uh, back backend in order to do the color management, that's for the planning. Um, we also have some really good designs for multi-page support, so hopefully we'll be able to do canvases and um, multiple pa pages. That they, they won't be based in SVG because SVG2 rejected the idea of multiple pa pages, um, but we still need the functionality because there's lots of... Um, people who use Inkscape in order to do production work. Um, and I, I would also say that there are lots of user experience um, improvements that are being designed right now in the in the new UX team. Lots of small tweaks, small things where Inkscape can be designed a little better. Um, and I think that's it for functionality, at least in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I will pass you back to Mark. Thank you. Okay, so it seems we have many exciting things to come in the future of Inkscape, so I cannot wait for some of them, and I hope you're excited by them too. Um, so, what to say now? Join us if you can, use Inkscape, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And thank you for coming to LGM. Hello. Hello. Okay, so th there's a question here about uh, how many users are you using Inkscape? No, let, let's start in order, probably. So when's, when is the next Hackfest and how to join and participate? 
Oh, yeah, of course. Um, okay, so the next Hackfest hasn't been confirmed uh, with a specific date, but I'm, I'm aiming at August. Uh, online, right? Um, I hope that that gives you a, a more specific answer. Um, but if you want to, if you're interested in the uh, details, come to the Rocket Chat, and um, we'll make sure that you get the, the information. Mm. Okay. Um. Tracy, Mark, what's the, what's the next quest question? Um, there was a question about some diffusion curve, but I don't know about it. So um, I, I don't. So, so, sorry, uh, myself himself. I, I I don't know about the diffusion curves. Uh, so there are two issues, potential issues with uh, implementing that. The first one is that uh, the, we try to have uh, SVG confirmant output as much as possible. Uh, so we need to make sure that this kind of uh, gradients can be handled in SVG, uh, maybe with gradient meshes if, uh, if need be. So if it can be implemented with the gradient meshes, we can do it and we will just need people to basically do the UI for it. And if if it cannot, then we need to see how we can specify some kind of uh, uh, implementation of it in uh, XML and uh, SVG in general, and uh, basically suggest it to the SVG specification if it's uh, if it could be useful to all SVG, basically. Um, okay, so I'm going to take the next question, which is about how, how many users does Inkscape have? This is obviously a very hard question to answer, but I'm going to answer in my um, my role as the, the the website administrator. Uh, we know that Inkscape is down, downloaded from 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 the website um, hundreds of thousands of times um, every month, um, and of course, this this is not the total list of uh, Inkscape users, since there will be duplicates, but there'll also be uh, lots of Linux users which aren't count counted. Um, for example, statistically, our user base is 95% Windows, 5% Mac, and 0% Linux. But that's that's obviously uh, not the, the, the truth of the matter. So um, obviously, the st stats are really hard. We don't record, uh, and we don't track u users, um, and we, we never will. Um, but to suffice to say that Inkscape is well regarded and has mil millions of users. Uh, yeah, when I when I last looked at the pop popularity contest uh, on uh, which is tracking how many users of some uh, distributions use some package, uh, basically we are on um, one Ubuntu install out of four that uh, records their uh, package installs and uh, one Debian out of five, so around uh, around this order of magnitude. And uh, in uh, one month of downloads on the website, we have, uh, I think, um, people have downloaded the 1.0 installers uh, approximately 600,000 times. And yeah, that's uh, about it. And uh, for the version that stayed longer on the new website, which was 0.92.4, uh, the Windows installers were downloaded 7 million times in total. So that gives you us an order of magnitude, but uh, we don't know the exact uh, numbers. Um, yeah, that's very interesting, Mark. I hadn't actually heard about the, uh, the, the, the other num numbers. Mm. Uh, do you want to take the questions about uh, prototyping the prototyping GUI? Um, yeah, I can't actually see the question. What, can you read it out for me? Yeah. Um, someone wanted to know if there have been some discussions about tools for prototyping GUIs, such as those as like Sketch, Figma, uh, Adobe XD. So I think Akira you, you is trying to fill that gap. 
So the idea here is that Inkscape being used as a tool to create user interfaces, not development of user interfaces for Inkscape. Um, the, I mean, people have no specific um, development plans so far as I've seen for creating tools specifically for uh, do, doing kind of UI uh, design work, work workflows. But if you're interested, we're, we're always interested to hear what kind of um, tools that Inkscape could provide for different kinds of segments like user interface design. Um, I know that's not really a very good answer, but uh, so far as we know, the, the, the UX team, which is collating a lot of the design, the future designs, doesn't have any plans. Yeah, there, there, are, um, there is another tool that is currently developed to try to fill that gap, uh, which is called uh, Akira, I think, Akira UX. Uh, that you can look up. I will put the link in the in the chat. Um, so another question for you, the, uh, Martin. Uh, someone would love to hear more about the community building and especially how do you make sure that people who are less tech techy or less uh, already involved in other open source projects and how do we keep those people engaged? Yeah, so it's it's actually, <clears throat> it's a hard process because um, the first thing that you have to be aware of is that as developers, we are naturally inclined to um, listen to and give a greater time and respect to other developers. It's just sort of how we are built in, in how we pro program. Um, so being able to uh, make sure you, your community has things like a code of con conduct, and that also has places where um, non-developers will find comfortable to to contribute. Uh, this is something, for instance, that the Rocket Chat gives us. It's a it's a, no disrespect to IOC, but Rocket Chat is a is a more comfortable place. Um, but th that's that's just like the basis. The 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 to go on further from that, you have to give non-developers uh, control over decision making itself. Uh, whether this means bringing them into the board or whether this just means, you know, for certain decisions, um, not having input into things, which can be some, some sometimes very hard, right? Because we want to be in control. Um, but oftentimes it's just better to say, okay, so this this new person here that wants to make something new, um, I don't have time to actually do this particular task myself. This person is going to make decisions that are not going to make me happy, and there's a limit to how much that I should be stopping them from doing the the, the task. Um, and so, like being able to to stop yourself is perhaps one of the most important lessons. Mm -hmm. um, so, a question about the SVG specification. So, is the SVG specification board easy to work with as a stubborn or open people? Do you feel that SVG could target more desktop publishing artwork instead of just web? And what is the vision of the SVG standard? Uh, so I think the most uh, the person most able to answer that question precisely is uh, Tav, uh, who is not here right now. But um, what, from what I heard, basically, the SVG specification people is very uh, web-centric with a lot of uh, people coming from um, browsers like uh, Firefox and Chrome. Uh, they used to be more involved from Adobe, who is more art-centric than web-centric, but I think right now it's mostly Chrome and Firefox. And it makes sense since uh, it's from the W3C, which is like the World Wide Web Consortium. So uh, SVG is primarily targeted at web. Um, I don't think they would be uh, close uh, to uh, suggestions to improve SVG, but uh, they are very conservative about it, and they basically want to have as low a burden for uh, browsers as possible. So uh, basically, they need for something to be added to SVG, uh, you need to make sure that there are uh, several already uh, implementations ready to be uh, published instead uh, before they will basically consider adding it. So, 
it could target more desktop artwork, but it's primarily a web uh, specification, which is not incompatible. We can have uh, desktop targeted stuff in it, but not. it's not easy to make it evolve. <laughs> um, so another question about specification. Uh, I noticed that you mentioned near the end that you were looking for a file format with multiple pages. Uh, so both multiple pages. Oh, it's not a question. Uh, and SVG were on the table for open raster format discussions tomorrow. So yeah, it might be interesting to look at open raster discussions to see how we want to implement stuff in SVG. Um, Martin, maybe for you, do you feel a moment, a new momentum of users and companies interested in Inkscape 1.0 as Blender was in when it released 2.80? Um, yeah, I think I think every release that we do, we definitely see a, an uptick in in interest. Uh, the the one point has been special for us, and we have definitely received a lot of media attention. Um, a good example of that is we had a, a ASEF supporter support, so they gave us a um, some money, uh, and you can see them on our support page on our website. And uh, you know, I, I I don't think that that would have come to us if we uh, hadn't have made the release. Um, you know, we, it, it's difficult to know about in industry because we have very weak uh, industrial ties to all of the the companies that use Inkscape. Um, some great examples of that actually is things like people companies that produce cutting machines and and other kinds of uh, devices. A lot of them actually use or recommend in Inkscape in a really heavy way, but very few of them actually contribute or are in contact with us. So it's it's difficult to know like what the um, we, we were just talking about how difficult it is to know how, how many like ordinary users that we have, but it's also difficult to know how many industrial users we have too. Uh, but yes, we definitely have a, a a vigor and a vim going on with a uh, with one 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 point oh. Mm. So, uh, Mark, do you, do you think that conforming to SVG is hindering Inkscape feature development? Not really, as uh, most things can be done, done in SVG. Like, almost all vector things can be done in uh, uh, SVG. And it's just a matter of providing an easy UI to access what could be done, basically. Uh, except for vector meshes, uh, like uh, gra gradient meshes, but we tried, and I, th I think we will make it added in some later version of Edgy. Yeah, I think uh, we, we, if, we have if, a couple if, of things. If Krita could have an independent implementation, then <laughs> then we yeah, so, definitely make it. So I know we have a couple of things that are on the the slab for the next release or the next few few releases. Things like multi-page support. Um, that we are definitely going to have to do ourselves because we, we, we have a strong signal from the SVG working group that they are not interested in supporting those things. Um, but we'll just have to see how we can develop it so that if in the future with SVG 3, 5, or whatever, they, they introduce these features that are Inkscape SVG variants are not too, too far away from what we would expect. Um, so, will there be a vector brush for the power pencil tool, like for the grease pencil tool in Blender? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really used the grease pencil tool in Blender. Maybe, Martin, do you know about it? Or? Um, I, I've only seen a couple of videos on the Blender grease pen, pencil. Um, Blender videos always look amazing, so... Um, it's hard yeah. to it's hard to dig out from the from the fog of en en envy, um, but I, I I've seen that the L LPEs are probably the closest thing that we have, but I don't think it's comparable. Oh yeah, M maybe there could be improvements to the power pencil tool with more brushes, but uh, it's 
it's not impossible, but we haven't tried to implement it. Um, Um, did we miss any questions? Um, I, th I think we're okay. No, there is a question about the Shape Builder tool, which exists in uh, Illustrator, I think. And uh, it's not on the roadmap because uh, it's a lot of work and basically no one has time for that. But if we have anyone willing to implement it and uh, with some knowledge about how to potentially implement it, then sure, it's like, why not? It is so not like, like all, all features that exist in other software, we are not against it. It's just that I, we did not have time in the past to do it, and it's a lot of work. Yeah, so um, there's, a, there's a couple of actually uh, Adobe-like fe features that um, specific users have asked for, things like the color, color management, improvements to swatches, and so forth. Uh, a lot of the, those discussions are actually happening in the UX team. Um, the, the UX team knows that there isn't a promise that all of the features that they design will be implemented, but it is at least the start of the discussion that happens from the designer perspective. Um, so there's a question here about uh, what is the, the simplest way to help Inkscape. Um, and this, the, so Inkscape, like all open source pro projects, primarily needs contributors, right? People who get active. But it's okay to um, do simple things like uh, help with retweeting or answering questions on the forums or donating some money. All of these things are, are the simplest, perhaps, ways of, of contributing. Uh, but we also need the documentation writers, translators, um, people who do graphics, like all of the amazing artists that do the About Screen contest, um, amazing contributors, I have to say, who really help sort of raise the level of Inkscape from just merely developers to like more more than that. Um, how was the transition from Launchpad to GitLab, uh, in particular the bug reports migration? So I'll answer the part that's not about bugs, and I will let uh, Martin about the, the rest. So one of the one of the technical parts was to that we migrated from uh, Bazaar, which is used in Launchpad, to Git in GitLab, and that was quite an easy part. That we transferred all the Bazaar commits into Git, and that was really painless. And coming into GitLab and starting to use the GitLab uh, with uh, more Git-esque uh, workflow was really easy, I think, for many of the contributors of the project. It took some time from some other some, some contributors to get used to it, but uh, mostly it uh, going into GitLab was uh, painless for most things. And for bugs, I will let Martin. <laughs> Sure. So the, the the bugs migration is still happening, and in in fact, this is one way that people can contribute. Um, there's a bugs migration pr uh, uh, game. In fact, there's a game where you can earn little animated ba badges uh, of little dancing bugs that Chris has, has done. Uh, we'll post a link uh, to, to so that everybody can have a look. But um, so we we've, we've we've moved a lot of the seventy thousand bugs that we had on Launchpad, or closed them as uh, as needed. But it's a, it's a lot of work, and it's taken more than a year to, to sort of go through even the ones that we have so far. Um, but it's definitely a worthwhile pro project because we've, we've recovered some of the issues or patches that we've had in the past. Um, we know that when we transitioned to GitLab, we lost a couple of the people who were looking after our Launchpad is issues tracker because they didn't want to move, um, which is always sad. But, but this is, of course, we had to have a balance between the the project's needs in terms of development and also what you did different contributors were, were com comfortable with using so would you hope for mega grants as the ones that blender got from intel nvidia etc I mean, uh, we, <laughs> Inkscape is not a, a, com a company, so it's not quite the same thing. 
Yeah, basically, Blender, uh, when they got these mega grants, uh, they already had uh, big structures with full time employees and uh, lots of organizations around uh, around it. So uh, I think I, I, I would not refuse any mega grants. Uh, and I think it would uh, basically uh, make the project advance a lot. But we don't even have uh, money for one full time developer right now. So it's uh, it would be a lot of uh, work on the project current contributors to handle uh, such uh, a big grant basically because it would um, the first thing we would do with some of this money would be with such an amount of money would be to try to reorganize the project to be able to handle it and to have full-time contributors etc and it would take it, it um, it would take a, a much longer time than for Blender to use it, basically. So it yeah, would not solve everything. I think one of the, the, the biggest sort of uh, uh, mega contributions that a com company could make is actually to, to hire a developer. Right? So if, if, if Red Hat turned around and hired a developer who was a full-time Inkscape developer, that would be way more of a contribution and immediate because of the way in which Inkscape is structured currently. Uh, than just a, a large part of m money. Um, Q and A. Inkscape has its own forum implementation. Do you find it easier than using something like Discourse? And what are the team's experience in communicating with users? Uh, I should probably ha handle the uh, Inkscape implemented its own for forum. So I, I, I wrote the forum uh, in Django, Python, um, mostly because most of the implementations of forums that were out there were PHP, and I really don't like PHP. So this is a, this is a very biased account. But um, after many discussions uh, with a couple of forum people who, who, who were looking after different forums online, we got a sense of what the requirements were. And it took about six months of, of backwards and forwards and programming and fixing and trialing and stuff. So um, in, in the end, I think we've, we've got a forum which is actually pretty solid. Um, so far, it's been, it's been fairly active, but not, but not very active. Um, but it's also nice to see users being able to post their, their pictures and talk amongst themselves about things um, and being able to answer que questions where the, the answers don't disappear like they do in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if, if, if anybody's interested in looking at the Python code for, the, for our for forums, um, the, the Inkscape web pro project is on Git GitLab. Um, so, are there inter interoperability discussions between open source graphics software, or are the open formats already okay? Uh, so, there are definitely discussions between open graphics software, um, and well, other people in other software could probably uh, tell more about uh, discussions, like uh, the discussions happening on uh, ORA tomorrow, for instance, uh, are an example of that. Um, for the SVG format in particular, uh, we have some discussions sometimes with uh, Krita, like I hang out on the Krita IRC channel and sometimes chime in in, in some discussions. Uh, but there are not a lot of open source uh, projects implementing uh, SVG and uh, certainly not uh, trying to implement the full SVG specification. Like um, uh, Scribus is uh, implementing some of the SVG that, so that you can import SVG files in Scribus. Um, uh, FontForge is interesting basically in path, so you can, um, uh, I, they, they are interested in people having path implemented, uh, implemented in uh, FontForge, but they don't really care about gradients or any fancy features because it's not in their interest to create fonts, basically. So we, it, like, um, specifications make it easy to handle those matters because we try to implement what's specified, other try to implement what's specified, etc. And we don't have a lot of uh, discussions about uh, trying to further 
uh, modify the SVG specification with other projects, but we could have some such discussions. So, Mark, what's your favorite new feature in 1.0? One, 1 uh, center, center line tracing, probably. Uh, that, that is a very good feature. Um, but it's, it, it's hard to pick out because we've been using it for so long. Um, but I think mesh gra gradients, they're, they're, they're definitely the coolest. They were already there before, I think. Ah, they're still cool. I, th I thought <laughs> we disabled them. I thought we disabled them for a 9.2, but maybe they were there. Hmm. Um, how much budget do we have and how do we spend the donation money? Or is this information available somewhere? Um, it is it, it is information that's available. I unfortunately don't have it on hand, um, but I know that we have m we have more money coming in currently than we are able to spend on things like hackfests, uh, especially since we're not spending any money this year on uh, uh, airplanes and hotels, um, which is different from pre previous years. Um, but so the, this is where we're in. We're in this tricky situation where we are getting more donations than we can spend on biscuits, but we are not. We're not getting enough donations to to hire somebody or to do large contracting projects. Um, yeah. especially, especially since some of our sponsor are technical sponsors that just uh, give us free access to CDN, free access to servers, etc. So we don't have a lot of uh, spending on technical stuff. Most of our spendings are for uh, meetings between developers, which are we try to do once or twice a year, but not this year, obviously. I think it's does Inkscape use SVG to store layer effects like blur, shadow, outline stroke, and yes. uh, lights? Uh, yes. Uh, in SVG 1.1, it was uh, in the SVG specification that uh, filters uh, are well specified in uh, SVG. Uh, the SVG 2 specification outsourced that to a filter specification, which is, I think, a subsection of CSS something. Uh, specification, uh, which has a whole section about uh, SVG uh, tags uh, for filters and uh, what exists and exactly what they do. And it was one of the most difficult to read specifications that I've ever seen in W3C. Uh, that's the last qu question that we have so far. Oh. Um. I will put the link. So it's, it says, um, do Inkscape developers plan to form a foundation like Critter and Blender have? Mm. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're an organization that's a part of the um, uh, Software Free Freedom Conservancy. So we, we have a structure, but we don't have a foundation which could conceivably operate independently. Uh, do we have a Mastodon Fediverse account yet? Um, so the, this actually is a quick question for the Vectors team. The, the, <coughs> the Vectors team has accounts with all kinds of social media, including Mastodon. Um, it, not only do they have uh, accounts, they also do tracking and various other interesting ways of, of making sure that all the news that we produce ends up on all of the plat platforms. Forum versus chat. What is the future? Um, what's my opinion between forums and chat? It's. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you use the for forums at all, Mark? Uh, no. No, I don't use the forums. I, tr I try to react uh, quite often on the chat, but. Yeah, so so I think uh, chat is good because it's more it's higher back bandwidth and more more immediate. So if there's a lot of back backwards and forwards, then chat can be very valuable. 
Um, but when it comes to um, being able to lay out your thoughts and um, take time, uh, post <clears throat> examples, that sort of thing, uh, the forums are much better. Uh, we actually fi find this in, in, interestingly between GitLab and Rocket Chat or I IRC, in that uh, developers can chat in, in IRC. Um, but often they will document things in Git in GitLab, and I think GitLab is operating like a for, like a developer for forum for us. Um, is the AI format open? No, definitely not. The AI format, well, sort of. The AI format is actually a PDF uh, since uh, ten or fifteen years ago before it was EPS. Uh, so it's basically a, a valid PDF file that you can rename AI to .pdf, uh, but it contains all the AI-specific elements like AI filters and some AI editing data as a binary blob inside the PDF. And as far as I know, it has never been reverse engineered by anyone and never been specified anywhere. So contrary to, for instance, the Photoshop format, which was published by, um, which is binary, but was published by uh, Adobe, the AI specification was, as far as I know, never released and never reverse engineered. Yeah, artificial I ignorance indeed. Yeah, I think the, the overall roadmap question was in the video. Um, if you've got a specific question about future developments, though, please please QA that. Uh, Tim says we are almost out of time. Excellent. These were some really good question questions. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone, for your questions. And thank you, LGM, for letting us uh, present uh, Inkscape that many people already knew anyway. <laughs> But yeah, the questions were really interesting and I hope you enjoyed the presentation and the video. So thank you, LGM. And Thanks, chaps. <laughs>